Hi, I'm Ed Chung, and again, I have been years, and I'm also an internal medicine physician, producing a series of eight videos um, to help other patients or other people who have been years disease get a better understanding of what's going on. Um, this is the third video of eight, where I'm going to talk about the symptoms and perhaps give a little extra information as to why uh, patients with people with Meniere's disease get these symptoms. Okay, So again, um, Meniere's disease or syndrome is a malfunction or a dysfunction of the inner ear complex from increased fluid pressure that is caused and that because of the increased pressure it causes a variable constellation of symptoms. You know, the intensity, duration, and characteristic symptoms of Meniere's disease vary in each individual. However, I sort of think of the symptoms broken into three different sections or three different types. Um, first, you have the cochlear symptoms, which is the hearing symptoms, uh, primarily deafness and tinnitus. Uh, the second sort of section or uh, series of uh, symptoms people get are the vestibular or balance symptoms, which uh, causes nausea and vertigo. And then the third symptom, general, general symptoms that people get with Meniere's disease are the, what I call the three F's, which are fullness, fatigue, and fugue which is a confusion or sort of forgetfulness, okay? Um, before I forget, I, I'm going to actually um, highly recommend that patients who have some hearing loss or tinnitus or, or possibly have Meniere's disease uh, download this free hearing app that is on the um, iTunes sort of app website, uh, and it's called You Hear. Um, and the little app is actually this blue one. Uh, well, it's sort of fuzzy, but it's this little blue one called You Hear, and it's free, and it's actually a very, very good uh, app to um, sort of test your hearing. And patients with true Meniere's disease will actually see their hearing fluctuate up and down um, with this application and a good set of headphones. So um, going through the first symptoms, um, which are the cochlear or hearing symptoms that people get, um, the primary, again, the cochlea, is the um, inner ear, Meniere's is the mini, uh, inner ear, the cochlea is the little conch shell thing that um, regulates your hearing. Uh, next to the cochlea you have the vestibula, okay, and both these things have their own little nerve that join together called the eighth nerve and lead into the brain and brain stem. Okay. So the reason people get um, the deafness, okay, is because this whole complex, this whole inner ear complex, gets puffed up with fluid, okay? And patients with the cochlear, or the hearing loss, um, get two symptoms. First is deafness, okay? Um, which I get deafness, I mean, I've got a little hearing aid right now, it's helping me hear, I'm gonna turn this off and put it down. Um, and then most of the deafness is um, usually low frequency hearing loss. And um, if you look at it like a hearing hearing chart that I have, um, you'll actually see that the frequencies of my hearing are primarily lost on the lower end. Okay. Okay. And the reason for the low frequency hearing loss is if you look at the cochlea in a more detailed view, you'll actually see that what happens is these tiny little hair cells are in the fluid. Okay and um, they attach to these tiny nerves, and these nerves go all the way down. Well, at the top of the cochlea, you have a smaller area and a very tight little space with less, less um, fibers, and at the bottom of the um, cochlea, you have more fibers and a large amount of space. Well, when this complex blows up and gets a huge amount of pressure, the smaller area up here, and with less fibers, get damaged first because it's a smaller space and there's less and there's less fibers for it to damage okay and that's sort of why um, patients traditionally get uh, low frequency hearing loss the second symptoms patients get are tinnitus and this is a ringing sound usually from in, in one ear um, from both bent or broken hair cells and what they do is they s send signals irregular signals and you get tinnitus but the other reason people get tinnitus, and it's just found re uh, more recently, is that uh, the cochlea uh, nerve cells are always firing, 
okay? So even when you're in a completely quiet room with no sound at all, what happens is these little hair cells in your cochlea are constantly firing a signal. When the hair cells get damaged or, or, or get injured or hurt, what happens is that there's no more firing of the of electricity down the nerve. The brain doesn't know what to do with it. And so in order to fill that gap, the brain actually generates its own little sound um, to fill in the gap that, that, that it's missing. Okay, And so what happens is you get low frequency hearing loss, but the sound that you hear in your hear most commonly for, for Meniere's is a very high pitched, high frequency sound. Okay. Um, the other thing is that some, uh, and I do experience this, and uh, sometimes you'll get tinnitus or ringing, not just in one ear, but in the opposite ear in, in a lower, lower degree. And the latest research is showing that actually 10 to 20 percent of one side's hearing actually comes from the opposite ear or opposite hearing. And so that possibly could explain why you, get bi you can get bilateral or both sides hearing tinnitus. Going into the, the next complex, or the next set of symptoms that patients, people get, are uh, the um, vestibular or balance center symptoms, which are essentially nausea and vertigo, okay? These things are very, very, very annoying, and these are, this is what causes people to get really, really sick. Um, again, the inner ear has two separate structures, but they're connected from the, <coughs> connected. So you have the cochlea, again, which is the hearing, and then you have the, the semicircular canals, they're called, okay? You gotta think of these semicircular canals, okay, as uh, balance areas, or, or they're like little levels. I don't know if you go to a hardware store or, or if you work with, with, with um, work, workshop or wood, you'll, you have these little balance levels, okay? And what these semicircular canals are, or they're filled with fluid, just like the cochlea is, and inside the semicircular canals, there's these tiny, tiny little hair fibers, Unlike the cochlea, where there's all, it's always firing, the semicircular canals, the hair cells, and the nerve there is not always firing. What happens is, when you tilt your head to the right, fluid gets pushed up through one of these cells, or through one of these tubes, just like a balance level. And the fluid gets pushed through there, and it pushes the hair cells in one direction. The hair cells send off the signal to the nerve, and it tells the brain that your head's tilting one way. Same when you tilt your back or forward. Again, all this is from fluid motion triggering hair cells in the semicircular canal. Okay. With increased pressure in the semicircular canal, what happens, again, it bends and it, it disrupts and it irritates uh, these little fine hair cells. And then these hair cells send off these abnormal signal to, to, to the nerve and then to the brain, and the brain doesn't know what to do with it, and it causes severe nausea. And then what happens is when there's extra fluid in one of the canals, you have develop vertigo, where the whole room feels like it's spinning or turning. When the symptoms get very, very, very severe, what often happens is that um, you get these things called drop attacks, where you actually, people fall to the floor, and they feel like the whole room is spinning. Uh, very commonly, often with these drop attacks, also is they'll get a really, really high pitch hearing or buzzing in their ear or tinnitus, and it's thought to be caused by the fluid shift back and forth. Okay. So the third sort of series or set of uh, symptoms that patients with Meniere's get are three Fs I call, which is fullness, fatigue, and fugue, or confusion or memory lapse. Okay. Um, you know anybody who has ever gotten sick. And I'm sure everyone's experienced a little bit of vertigo where they get a little dizzy or a little bit of just fullness of the ear and hearing loss where they can't pop the ears. Well, a co think of a combination of all this together. Deafness, tintness, ringing, and then vertigo. And if you get all these symptoms together, they're going to cause fullness, fatigue, and fugue. Okay, And those are really the symptoms, again, of Meniere's disease and sort of a brief explanation of what, why people get them. Uh, again, um, they're either hearing problems, which is de deafness and ringing or tinnitus. Number two is vestibular problems or balance problems, which are uh, nausea and vertigo. And then number three, generalized symptoms of the fatigue, the fullness, and the fugue. 
And um, in my next video, video four, I'm actually going to talk about um, the diagnosis of Meniere's, how we make the diagnosis, how, well, physicians make the diagnosis of Meniere's, and what you really should be looking for, or what they are looking for to make that diagnosis. Thank you.